Morning and welcome to another technology video. So um, in this video today we're going to be talking about our PFSense firewall and running it with a Virgin Media um, internet connection uh, where your hub is in modem only mode. Um, we have had a few major issues as you can see here by this graph. Um, I'm going to talk you through the graphs first of all. Uh, so the first thing that we did we set up our PFSense box on um, version 245 um, and we started off with um, a good connection. Um, unfortunately we started seeing some latency and packet loss um, and we did a bit of investigation into this. We couldn't get to the bottom of it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the graph. So this is the first graph that we uh, that we that we had. Um, as you can see here, we've got a high load of latency and packet loss uh, is shown by the red at the top. Uh, if I move on to the 11th, it gets progressively worse, as you can see here. So let's talk through what this graph is. So the blue is the average latency, the yellow is the high latency, and the red is packet loss. Um, this big spike here was a reboot of our PFSense box uh, to try and resolve the issues. Um, and I'll talk you through the configuration that we had on that. So um, let's look at the 12th of this month. And you can see here, it just gets progressively worse. Um, and then the 13th again, uh, progressively worse. Now, um, what we ran through was uh, we actually got to the stage where we couldn't use Zoom. Um, it was becoming too much of a problem. So um, the configuration that we had on our device was standard firewall, IPv4 only. Um, we had uh, DNS, DHCP, so nothing special. Um, and we also had PFSense um, running PF blocker NG and also snort. So at this point, up until this this red section here, that's what we ran. Um, what we then did is we downgraded to um, PF Sense 244P3, uh, and the reason for that is because all the forums were talking about um, downgrading fixes the problem. So that's what we did. We set up exactly the same, only we didn't set up snort this time so we just had pfsense 244p3 along with um, pf blocker ng and all we were doing on pf blocker ng was blocking malicious domains we weren't blocking adverts we weren't blocking trackers um, it was purely uh, malicious domains that we were blocking and um, the priority one ipv4 lists so as you can see here, it started off okay, and I thought actually this is going to be manageable, but then again we started seeing latency creep in, we saw a massive amount of packet loss, um, and so what we actually did there was to um, try and live with it, try and um, nurse the, um, the WAN interface, we did all sorts of changes in terms of monitoring to try and reduce the packet loss um, but as you can see here it didn't work so what we then did uh, was to take some drastic measures so yesterday uh, as you can see here by this graph um, we tried a number of things but this huge area here was a massive amount of packet loss for us and it was just interrupting. Everyone was going crazy in the house. Uh, my wife couldn't do Zoom calls with her school. My son couldn't play his Xbox. So um, yeah, they were. <laughs> it, was, it was a problem. So what I did, I took drastic measures um, last night at about six o'clock. This spike here um, is the shutting down of PFSense and then putting the, uh, the router back into router mode away from modem mode. So then I thought, let's do a bit more research. So um, I started investigating the table sizes that people were talking about. Um, now, one of the forums was talking about uh, if you upgrade to PFSense 2.5, um, then that problem uh, isn't evident anymore. So what I've done this morning, let's move on to the 15th. What I've done this morning, as you can see here, this is our um, our router only mode. Um, this block here is me putting the device 
um, upgrading it basically to um, two five. Uh, and as you can see here we've got a little spike of latency here but nothing to write home about so we're just going to keep an eye on that so all I've done this morning is to set up um, the PFSense basics so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to load PF blocker NG and walk you through the configuration that we use on that and then we will start having a look at monitoring the connection Okay, so we've done quite a bit of digging around to look at getting this working um, on the latest version. We've updated the 2.5.0 version to the latest. Um, what we were seeing was PFNG, PF blocker NG wasn't working. Um, and the reason for that is I will go through those now. So the first thing you want to do is to come into your PF blocker NG system, uh, go to your um, IP settings. You want to scroll down, make sure that you've got WAN and LAN set and um, create your floating rules. Now in the IPv4 setup, what you want to do is you want to, in here, you want to make sure that this is set to deny both. So what this is going to do, it's going to deny your clients talking out to any IP addresses that are on that list and it's going to stop any IP addresses outside in the open talking to your system. So you want to set that to deny both and save that. Now once that's done, um, you want to come into your firewall rules and check your firewall rules and your floating rules in particular. You want to make sure that you've got your list in here so that you're blocking on the WAN interface and you're blocking on the LAN interface as well. So that's got our um, uh, IPv4 lists working. So the next thing that you want to do is to get your DNSBL working. Um, they've changed things. So um, previously, once it was set up, um, you uh, set your system up under your general setup to use your external DNS servers. Uh, but they've changed things slightly now. So what you've got to do to force it is you now need to um, come into your DHCP server. Now, you didn't used to have to do this, but we've noticed that to get ours working, we do. Um, as you can see here, here's your pool that's been defined. Um, the DNS service says leave blank to use the system default DNS servers. In this instance, IP if DNS forwarder or resolver is enabled, otherwise the server is configured on the system general setup page. So we've left ours blank, so um, it should be using uh, the system DNS, but it's not. So what we're going to do is we're going to tell our system to use the DNS server of our PFSense box and that should get things working there. So once that's done you want to come down and we want to save our configuration. So while that's working I'll just show you our DHCP configuration. So at the moment the DHCP configuration as you can see here is picked up using the default gateway and the DHCP server but it's using, for some reason, it's using the um, IP addresses of Virgin Media. So that will bypass PF Blocker. So you want to force your uh, DHCP clients to use um, your uh, PFSense box, and that should get that working. So um, what we want to do now is we want to release our DHCP lease and we do that with IP config space forward slash release and then we want to renew it from the server so we do an IP config slash renew okay so that's picked up the new IP address so let's now have a look to see if it's got the right one in there there we go so we can now see it here uh, DNS service that means that all future clients should pick up the IP address of the uh, PFSense box. Now if we go back to our system we should be able to test this. Okay so the way that you test this um, is fairly simple so what we're going to do is we're going to go into our PFNG blocker um, we're going to go to 
we're going to go to our feeds and I'm going to scroll all the way to the malicious section down here and I'm going to take something that we've got ticked so let's have a look uh, let's take this uh, disconnect me list so we're going to download this list now what we should get once we open this list as you can see here here are all the domains let's see if we can pick one anyone will do so let's have a look at addimages.suntimes.com let's see if this works so if it works correctly we should get a block page there we go so we're getting our block page from uh, PF blocker NG um, now this will block it silently in the background um, if it's an app you won't see this but if you're browsing to it in your um, web browser then you'll see the block page and you can configure this block page to how you want you can um, customize it completely so that now means that we've got our IPv4 list working and our um, DNSBL list working as well now we should see the block counts on our system here there we go so there's the two in our malicious domains and we've uh, blocked 17 inbound from um, the priority one v4 list so it took a bit of jiggling about but that's uh, that's how we've managed to get it working and what we'll do next is we will now we've got everything working we will now monitor our virgin media connection to see what happens and we'll show you some of that later So the final piece of the puzzle, um, if you want to have a look at your logs from the system, so we should see IP blocking in the log there, which we do, which is great, and the uh, DNSBL log as well. So this is the raw log files um, that you can see here. So that is all now working and nothing else to go through on here with you. So what we can do now is we can have a look at our um, round trip times. So if we want to investigate that, we can come along to our diagnostics menu and we can go to our gateways. So to investigate the um, round trip times and packet loss to see if we're getting any, uh, what do you want to do? You want to come into your status menu come down to system logs uh, and then go to your gateways and as you can see here we've got nothing in the gateway at all so um, that would suggest to us that um, we're not seeing any uh, packet loss and again if you want to monitor the gateways directly then just come to status and then click on gateways and that will give you your round trip times that you can see here so it's monitoring your upstream gateway so not your um, IP address but you can set your own monitor IP address so if you wanted to change your um, IP address that it's monitoring you would come into interfaces and go to your WAN and then scroll down until you find your monitor no you don't you see So to set your monitor on um, your upstream gateway, you want to come into your status and then gateways. And then up here on the right hand side, you want to click on selected settings. And then you want to go into your gateway, click on the edit function and you want to scroll down. So. Um, you can set your monitor IP here so we've sometimes set ours to Google DNS um, to monitor the round trip times and packet loss but you can you can use your upstream gateway if you want should do the same thing um, that's entirely up to you how you want to configure it if you change that in there you will then start monitoring um, the IP address and you can set it to anything at all so that's all there is to that video um, we've talked through uh, our problems that we've had with um, packet loss 
and high latency. We've tried downgrading, we've tried um, now, we've tried upgrading and we're on the latest version here. So we are going to monitor this and let you know how we get on. Okay, so um, as promised, let's have a look at the stats for the rest of the day today. So quite clearly, as you can see here, um, this section here between 10 and 12 was us configuring the PFSense device. And since then, since um, since we completed the configuration, we've had no packet loss at all. And latency is well within manageable levels. So um, I'm putting this down as a permanent fix. So uh, if you've got a PFSense device that is experiencing high latency and packet loss, specifically on Virgin Media, then that is a fix. Upgrade to 2.5 and that is going to cure your problems.